Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Fernando. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work on the networking services team, and today we are going to go, we are going to talk about uh, pay programming, a technique that we have been trying in our team. All right, some context. So I work on Red and especially network management tools, tools like Network Manager, NM State, Network Role, NISPO, and all this. We are a group of six engineers, one PO and one manager. Uh, as I say, we work in four different projects with different backgrounds, different environments, different CI, uh, packaging process, everything is different on each project. Then we are a full remote team. So we have like four or five time zones in total and the time difference is too much because we have engineers on US, Europe and China and it's really, really hard to get them together. And then we have been uh, starting uh, to do uh, or to practice agile methodologies. So we started with a scrum. We have a two, spring, uh, two weeks of spring. It's quite great because we have been able to agilize everything. And well, that's uh, some context. So we noticed several problems and we decided to address them. Uh, the first one is that we needed to extend collaboration. Well, we noticed that most, most of our engineers were used to work alone. That is good, but at the same time, it could be a problem. For example, when they get stuck, usually they don't, do not ask for help, or when they need some, something from another project or someone else, they are not used to say, hey, will you help me out? Hey, could you let me know how this works? And that's, uh, that, well, th that's just simply not efficient. So we wanted to solve that. Then we wanted to avoid bottleneck situations. Right, we have six engineers, four projects. You can imagine that there are one engineer that knows about one of the projects, two engineers that know about one of the other projects, etc., etc. So when we have this kind of situation, and then suddenly one of the engineers come to a meeting and say, hey, I'm going to be a father, right? So I'm going to be on leave for four months. Great, how is going to do your work? No one knows about your project. If some issue came around, what are we going to do? So we start to learn all the projects really quickly and that, believe me, doesn't go well. And we wanted to avoid that. Also, not because of long leave, uh, long leave. We, it, could, it could be also because of uh, PTO, uh, holiday, or whatever. And believe me, when someone takes a PTO, that's the day when the customer reports the most important uh, bug ever. Then we wanted to extend the sense of ownership. So, as I say, we are doing a sprint. We create a sprint, we assign the task, and we start working on that. So we noticed something. The engineers, usually solve their own, uh, uh, their, their own tasks. And after that, instead of looking at the ball and say, oh, something is not complete, I'm going to help, or I'm going to take it, or whatever. They usually say, all right, let's take something else. <laughs> so we wanted to extend the, uh, the sense of ownership so all the engineers should, uh, should feel like they are owner of all the projects. So when the, they finish they finish everything on the sprint, they should be able to go to all the tasks that are on the sprint and say, hey, I can help you with this. Uh, I noticed that you didn't start with this, so let me take it. And we can complete the whole sprint instead of adding more stuff to the sprint and then some other engineers not be able to finish everything. And therefore, the Scrum is a little bit messed because you are not completing any sprint at all. And then the other problem was uh, the bonds between uh, colleagues. So, since COVID, we have not met, and that is around three years ago. And that's a big problem, because in the end, when you are working with people, you need to trust them, you need to be confident about them, so you need to have a bond with your teammates. This bond is really important, especially when you are asking questions, especially when you are asking for help, uh, when you need to discuss uh, a specific technical uh, topic, 
imagine that you have an opinion about technical topic, the other person has an opinion about technical topic. If you don't have a bond with this person, probably there can be a lot of misunderstanding and you can take things personal. Um, it's hard to know each other well if you never see each other's faces. And especially if you are working all remote and then you just have one uh, call a week and in which you say, hey, I'm doing this, 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 and this. Okay, see you. Right? It's quite hard. And also it's good to feel support at work. If your cat dies, it's great to have someone that say, hey, it's okay, I can't take your tax for today. No need to worry, I heard about your cat. Try to feel good. So, how we wanted to, how, how we decided to improve this? Uh, with pay for money. So one day I was talking with my manager and he said, hey, have you heard about pay for I was like, no. And he said, yeah, take a look. So <laughs> I volunteered to start implementing pay for in our team. So I decided to look over a lot of documents, talks, etc. about pay for and try to understand how it works, what are the advantages, disadvantages how we could implement it, how to implement it, what are the different styles, etc, etc. And after doing that, uh, we are here doing this talk. So I hope it's going to be, my research is going to be useful for you. <coughs> so pay programming, the basics. Basically, there's always a driver and a navigator. So it's just that simple as two person, uh, two programmers usually, get together and say, let's work together on this specific issue. They sit and they start working on it. There's one condition, just one keyboard or one computer. So no, it's not two people programming at the same time. Uh, that's something that we used to do even remote. But it's two people on a call or in person looking at the same screen saying, oh, OK, the driver is the one that manages the keyboard, do the coding, etc., etc., And the navigator needs to think on the bigger picture. So, for example, if the driver is designing a feature, the navigator should say, oh, but if we do this, uh, we are going to break another customer case because we know that there is a customer using this other option, which is a conflict with this one. This kind of uh, thinking is the responsibility of the navigator and also is reviewing the code all the time. So if you are programming in C and you do a malloc, then you need to do, then you, uh, need to do a free. So that is part of the navigator responsibility to stay uh, looking at the code. And if the driver doesn't do it, you need to say, hey, you for forgot to do that. So all right, this is the basics. Then they switch position constantly or frequently. The idea is that they can, after five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it depends a lot on your style and your preference, they switch position. And the driver becomes the navigator, and the navigator becomes the driver. I must say that this can be done with experts between experts, between someone new or more junior and an expert, between two uh, junior engineers. It's beneficial in all the situations. All right. So there are different styles. There are more of them, but I think these are the more important ones. So the first one is unstructured caving. Um, besides the usual uh, um, driver navigator, which is the one that I described, there is unstructured pairing, which is very similar to what people do in an office. You have a problem, you are working solving it, you go just, you ping your teammates and say, hey, I want to fix this with you. Sure, let me help you. And you start working together. In this case, there is no structure, there are no rules, Maybe you decide to use two computers. OK, that's fine. The idea is that you work together. This is the simplest way to start doing it, and this is the simplest way to uh, start implementing it in your, in your team. So we started doing this uh, unstructured pairing. We just get an issue. I think a teammate, hey, let's work on this. Perfect. Let's get into it. So well, like I say, uh, I'm working on this problem. Would you like to work with me? They join a currency together and they work together. This is quite simple. Then we have ping pong pairing. So uh, if you are a fan of testing and you are a fan of test-driven development, if you don't know what is test-driven development, it consists on 
first you develop the test that should pass, and then you develop the bug fix or the feature that needed so that test uh, passes. So basically, one person goes to the other and decides to do pay programming, and they decide to do test driven development. So if you don't like test driven development or in your uh, projects you don't have tests, you should, but if you don't have tests, you cannot do this. Uh, then the first person creates a test that is failing after that with, uh, as a driver, and then the other person as the navigator. And after that, the second person, the navigator, changes position and creates a code or the implementation that makes the test to pass. So then they switch position again, and this time, uh, in this case, for the second person creates now the test failing, and the first person creates the um, implementation, so the test passes, and they repeat. This is quite good because at the end, you have the feature or the bug fix and tests for them. So you are doing two work in one. Um, I must say that this, from my point of view, it's uh, more adequate when you are working between two experts because um, it could be quite hard for a new guy to create a test for a project that they don't know and the test must fail, so it's going to be quite confusing for them to create something that won't work, having in mind the idea that in the future it will work. But between two experts, this is a really, really good scenario. And then we have the backseat navigator, which is perfect for a junior or a new guy and an expert. The idea of this is quite similar to driver navigator, but in this case, navigator is not thinking only on the bigger picture. It's thinking on what is the driver going to do. So it's like when you are driving and you have someone by your side saying, oh, now turn right, turn left, now go straight. So it's basically the same, but programming. So the first person goes to the other, sit together, and do a paid programming per uh, session. But this time, one of the person, uh, for example in this case Bob, is going to be the driver and highlight the navigator. And the navigator is going to give direct, direct instructions to, to the driver. So this is really, really good for new guys. Because if the new guy is the driver, it's going to get used to the workflow, it's going to get used to the, um, to the files, uh, to the structure of the uh, architecture of the project, to, um, I don't know, the CI, to the tools that you are using, etc., etc. And I also found that this could be quite good for, um, uh, for an interview. For example, imagine that you are interviewing someone and you say, okay, so you are the navigator now, please tell me what I need to do. And that could be great. This helps a lot uh, new guys on the team. So these are the Three, uh, three main ways of doing paid programming. But now we have some, some very, very important considerations. The first one is that both programmers must be active. I mean, they must, they must participate active actively because if not, you are basically in a mentorship session telling them or explaining them something and the other person is just in silence. That's not paid programming. Or if the other person is uh, you are programming the other driver and the navigator is looking at the email, believe me, that is not paid programming. This is like you are programming alone and there is another person in the Google call listening to you programming. That's <laughs> that's all. Uh, both must keep and uh, must keep a, a running commentary. So it's similar to when we say paid programming. It's also um, programming out loud. So when you are the driver, it's quite hard to. Um, for the navigator, it's quite hard to understand what are you thinking about if you don't talk. So the driver must always describe what are they doing. So yeah, so I want to implement this. I want to create a function that is going to be added to this class, and this class is going to be used in this place, and we are going to add to this event to the loop, and this way the navigator is able to think about your idea and say, oh, but then if we add this event to the loop, it's going to fail because blah, 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 blah. And then the other thing is that relationship between the programmers are important. And managers, uh, leaders, or whatever person is implementing paid programming on the team must not force them. Because if you have two engineers that they don't get along, believe me, it's not a good idea to force them to work together in a paid programming session. 
because they are going to have conflicts and they are not going to be good at resolving, resolving them. So it's really important to first solve them. All right, so the result of our experiment. We have been paid programming for a couple of months, three months or something like that, or even more. We have been doing uh, regular sessions and initially it was quite hard to get people used to it. <laughs> like, um, we proposed it and it was like, yeah, we could try out. Not, <laughs> the people were not very convinced. But then we kind of forced it, like, yes, let's do it. And I volunteered to that, so I started to propose sessions uh, to several engineers. And I assumed, as they are kind and polite, they didn't reject them. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> I think they, they were considering, but they didn't do it. But after a couple of sessions, we got positive feedback and they say, hey, I like this. I really enjoy it. It was good, and I would like to continue doing it. So now, um, the engineers are starting to propose them to all the engineers without my help or without any other people's help. So that's a great thing. And we make sure that everyone in the team had a meaningful paid programming experience. So that means that almost everyone uh, were able to have at least a session or a couple of sessions to understand that. We are also flexible, so that means that we are not going to force anyone. So if one engineer say, oh, that's not for me, I don't like it, that's okay. You don't need to do it. This is like using Beam, Emacs, or whatever. It's just a tool, and you use it just if it's good for you. And also, whoop. all right, so some advantages. So first of them, the knowledge sharing. It was incredible. I mean, uh, doing this, I get a lot of experience in all the projects uh, we already manage, which is quite great. And all the people, uh, other engineers from the team doing this are getting that knowledge. It's really interesting to see the different scripts that people use, how they build their system, how they build the package, the CI. It's really, really good. And it's really nice to have someone explain it to you while they are working on it. Because, yeah, it's really easy to say, yes, read these docs. And the docs, you, you see, last time modified, uh, 20 cents. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, Okay, so then we have focus mind. I don't know if it happens to you, but at least it happens to me. Uh, when I work alone at home, I'm on the computer and say, hmm, what am I going to eat today? Oh, in the afternoon, afternoon I need to go to the grocery. Yeah, oh, look at the dog. Hey, dog. So it's quite hard to keep focused for a long time. But when you are on a meeting and you are working actively with one person, that changed because you have a person and so you're not going to say, hmm, what am I going to eat? No, you are focused because you are wasting also all the people's time. And you think, oh, but this, then I need to work more because I'm going to be more focused on the job, so I'm going to get more uh, tired. Uh, yes, but you are going to do the work in less time. I mean, if you really focus on the task, maybe you can do it in one hour, but if you are thinking in all the stuff, changing context all the time, maybe you it takes uh, three hours from you or two hours. Then we have resilience to interruptions. I know that your email probably looks like this. My one looks like, it, like this at least. So when I'm working on something, I get a Slack message. I immediately go to it. I read it and I start engage a conversation. Then I go back to my, um, to my work and then I get another Slack message. It's terrible. And when you are on a meeting, working with someone, you're talking all the time, you get this Slack message, and as you need to keep talking with this person and focus on the job, you're not going to read it. And then you learn to ignore them. And this is one of the best things that I learned doing paid programming. Yeah, you just learn to ignore all these messages. And one extra thing, which they call quality, because at the end there are two people looking at the code, and Four eyeballs see more than two eyeballs. And we reduce the coordination efforts. So when working together on a paper session, everyone were aware of the context. So, all right, so this issue is blocked because the last time we worked on it, we noticed this problem. And then if someone asks, oh, what is the status? You don't need the only person working on the issue to reply. You can, because you already know the 
context of the issue. So we reduce the cost in issuing F. But we notice some disadvantages. So the long time. Right, it's good to work with, uh, with uh, peers, and it's really great, but you also need a long time. You need time to reply to emails, phone calls, whatever need you have on your position, or even work on a simple coding issue by your own. That's great. So I don't recommend you to do 24-hour uh, paid programming session, so translate all your work to paid programming. I think that's a terrible idea. Uh, that's not going to go well. You're going to get burnout immediately, so try to do not do that. Uh, try to set an amount of time that works for you and make you feel comfortable. Then fatigue. So you, it's easier to take a uh, relax time when you are working alone because you don't feel like uh, pressure to continue working. So you say, okay, I'm going to drink some water. Uh, you go to the kitchen, you relax a little bit, drink some water, think about the problem. That's great. But when you are with someone that you might feel uncomfortable saying, oh, wait for me, I'm going uh, out for some water or whatever. So in order to avoid this, I recommend you to create, um, like if you are going to say, we are going to have two hour session or one hour session. Okay, so let's schedule uh, one five minutes break after 30 minutes or one five, uh, 10 minutes break after one hour. So this way you have time to relax and then come back with more energy. And skill levels. A skill levels could be a problem. If you put one junior engineer with a really, really um, experienced engineer, and or for example, someone that is new on the team, the new person is not going to be able to uh, speak up. So they have a great idea, and they are not. They don't feel confident enough to say, "Hey, uh, I'm the navigator, and I think what you are doing is wrong." Because the other person has been working on the project for 15 years. How could I know more than this person? Sometimes uh, fresh ideas are good, and you could have a different mindset than this person, and you can bring a lot of value to the uh, project. So, in order to avoid this, it's really important for the more uh, for the expert on the session to promote um, promote the, the behavior of speaking and make sure that the new guy or the junior uh, feel comfortable enough to ask questions and also challenge the idea. Like, if you say, for example, uh, all right, so we are going to do this function and add an uh, event to the queue. And the uh, junior is the navigator saying, mm-hmm. Then say, why do you think this is correct? Or what do you think about it? And force them to reply. Force them to provide their opinion. Maybe it could be, I think it's correct because blah, 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 blah. And then it's a correct answer. OK. But maybe they say, no, I don't think it's correct because uh, this is going to have a conflict with other part of the code. And you think about it and say, oh, that's right. And the first time that that happens, the junior feels more and more confident. And the next time, you are not going to force them to reply. They are going to reply by their own, and that's really great. Uh, conclusion. So we were able to extend collaboration. Uh, people feel now more comfortable collaborating with each other. Um, which is quite good, and um, we avoid bottleneck situations. Um, we were able to um, understand the context of the whole project, so people now can uh, contribute to uh, different projects, and if someone goes on PTO leave or whatever, someone else can take the position. And one thing that went well is to extend the sense of ownership, it didn't, it, it wasn't fixed at all. We improved a little bit, but we are still, uh, we are still struggling with, with this. So we are trying to fix that. Maybe next year at DEFCON, there is another talk of how to fix that. <laughs> I don't know. And then one thing that improved a lot is the bonds between the colleagues. So thanks to paid programming, I learned a lot of things about my teammates. And I mean personal things like, um, oh, what uh, do you like to play an instrument? Oh, I do this. Uh, do you like video games? Do you like uh, working? Do you like? And then you notice that you share hobbies and you share information about those hobbies. And I found myself talking with them about random stuff, hobbies or whatever um, after work. Like, hey, I saw this uh, movie and I really like it. And you like the other one, so maybe you like this one. 
So that's great because now you have a better connection and it's easier to, uh, when there's a problem, it's easier to challenge that idea and to share different opinions and get an agreement because you understand the other people con uh, context and also because you have um, personal bonds with that person. And usually you care more for other people's feelings and other people's uh, ideas when you have a bond with them. Um, maybe the solution for a lot of programming is to have a bond with customers. I don't know. So, all right. Uh, what I recommend is to try it out. Uh, if you want to try it out, uh, we have a workshop of pay programming today. Uh, so please feel free to join. We are going to we are going to have some hands-on experience. And other than that, if you are on a, on a team and you are a manager, a software engineer, team lead, code owner, whatever position, and you want to try this out, uh, feel free to reach me out or uh, follow these advices. Don't force people uh, if they are if they say that it's not they are not willing to do this. Uh, try out first um, unstructured paging because it's going to be much easier to implement. If they like it, then you can change to ping pong, you can change to whatever other method that you would like more. And uh, yeah, the last one is the make, if, if, you want, if you are a manager and you want to implement this, talk with one engineer that have some uh, interest on this and say, okay, you are going to promote this on the team. And this person needs to uh, see some talks, read documents, etc., etc. Gets a well-formed opinion and try try it out then on the team. All right, so I think that's all. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much. So, any questions, suggestions, or comments? How does it fit in with code reviews? With what, sorry? <coughs> with code reviews, learning requests, and so on. Right. Can you count it as pre approved? Uh, it was a job for the hour. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so the question was uh, how it works with code reviews. So with code reviews or merge requests, pull request reviews, it works well. I mean, uh, you can, in the end, you can uh, apply pay programming to almost everything. You can apply pay programming for a feature, bug fix, or even debugging, which is quite useful as well. Uh, but also for code review. I mean, imagine that someone, there are three persons working on a project, and two of them decide to review the, uh, the other person's uh, code. It's quite good because you are both of them at the same time, so it's parallel review, so that's great. And at the same time, you can do it with the person that did the code and ask questions. So you get immediate feedback. When you write down a comment in GitHub like, why did you do this? Then the next day, the person reply, I do this because blah, blah. Oh, I don't understand exactly why, what do you mean here? So it's a really slow process. But if you go to this person and say, hey, let's review your code. Hmm, you read it. Okay, so why did you do this? Oh, I do this because whatever. Oh, really? And why? Then you get immediate feedback. So that's completely... Yes, sorry, I meant a slightly different question. <coughs> oh, um, sorry, go ahead. Do you regard the code which is produced through pair programming as being already reviewed? No. Because you've got the navigator reviewing it while the driver writes it? No. Uh, when when uh, you uh, review the code, someone else out of the page needs to review it. Okay. So. Because also when you are uh, working on the issue, you can get biased, like you're working on that. So you don't, it, it's, it's always great to have many reviews as possible. You can get 10 reviews. If, if that's possible, please do it. Because usually someone is going to spot a bug or a problem in the code or whatever, or something that could be improved. All right, thank you. Uh, more questions? Yeah, please. Is that problem if you can't finish your task within the peer program set? Yeah, program session. All right. If it's only one hour, um, you do that, and the next time you you're going to start in the middle of the task, and then it's probably going to be confusing. Yeah. So the question is that if it is a problem, um, if the pay uh, if the people cannot finish the task in the pay programming uh, time box. So yes, I know. I mean, for example, you can start doing pay programming for uh, one hour. You didn't finish it. You can continue by your own. That's completely fine. Then you get more reviews. That's just that. Or maybe you can stop, take some notes. Like if you were coding uh, alone, when you're coding, at least on my case, there are some times in which I sit down, start working, and I don't finish the task. So then I need to start again in one day. 
that also happens when you work alone. So it's the same situation. It's both uh, solutions are fine. You can just uh, continue with the pair in another day or in another time and just okay. think what we did. Oh, we did this, we implemented this. And sometimes that is also useful because you read the code that you wrote together and say, oh, but this is wrong. So then you just bought a problem because you have a fresh mind and you are not uh, tired of coding. And also you can just continue okay. on your own. Right, please. Um, so you, you mentioned that um, the navigator and um, the driver would switch mm -hmm. positions every 15 minutes. How how do you handle like um, uh, like different maybe the navigator and the driver have uh, different IDEs? Uh, how do you uh, the, the the stuff that you have been working on is local on on the driver's computer, so now you have to. Like sync, you have a, like a like a draft branch or something where then the yeah. other person pulls and you know continues what you have. How does that work? All right. So the question is, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, driver and navigator switch. Uh, how do you do it if they have different workflows or, di or they call this local or different uh, uh, tools? So the thing here is that it's you must be flexible. So depending on the situation or what you are working on. You, uh, you can switch every 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Maybe you switch each uh, each task. So you have three tasks scheduled, and you say, okay, so the first one you're going to be the driver, and I'm going to be the navigator. Then we are going to switch for the next one. That's also an option. The thing here is that you need to adapt the method to your project, to your team, to your situation. It depends a lot. I have some considerations I didn't say, and it's really important to have a, a stable internet connection. <laughs> because if not, that if you are remote, that won't work. If you are in, in person in the office, that's fine. So as I said, it's just um, try to adapt it to yourself and to your team. And as I said, maybe uh, I, I described three styles. Maybe you think, oh, but I like to do it different. That's perfect. I mean, that's completely fine. Do it as you prefer. All right, so I think we are out of time. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it.